Hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Ventura. I am the National Manager of Outreach and Education at the American Liver Foundation, and I would like to welcome you to today's webinar. The American Liver Foundation is the nation's largest nonprofit serving people with liver disease. We provide a voice for patients with liver disease and their families for education, support, research, and advocacy. I would like to thank Dr. Kautar al who will be sharing her expertise on today's webinar. And thank you to Mallinckrodt Pharmaceuticals for the generous support for this webinar. I will now give the floor to Dr. al -Khalufi. Thank you, Lindsay. So today's webinar will be discussing the progression of liver disease from inflammation to liver cancer. So we'll start with inflammation, which is defined as the body response to cellular injury that leads to elimination of damaged tissue. The inflammation is a common trigger of liver disease, and it's considered the main driver of liver tissue damage, leading to progression from normal liver to fibrosis to cirrhosis to liver cancer. These are some of the major or the most common causes of liver disease. The viral hepatitis, mainly uh, hepatitis A, B, and C. Alcoholic liver disease or injury of the liver related to excess alcohol use. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is irritation of the liver by presence of fat related to uh, non-alcohol use. And this condition is commonly seen in patients with other uh, medical conditions, including diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, overweight, and obesity. Autoimmune liver diseases, including autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cholangitis, and primary sclerosing cholangitis. These are all autoimmune conditions where the body produces antibodies to fight against the liver, leading to inflammation and damage of the liver tissue. Medication, many prescribed and non-prescribed medicine or drugs can lead to inflammation and liver disease. Genetic disorders, including hemochromatosis, which is a disease related to an excess of iron in the liver. Wilson's disease, which is a disease related to an excess of copper accumulation in the liver and alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, another genetic disorder related to the inability of the liver uh, to transport uh, a protein which uh, sits in the liver and irritate the liver leading to inflammation and uh, scar tissue. Heart failure is another condition that can be associated to uh, inflammation of the liver and chronic liver disease. Fibrosis is a healing response in which the damaged uh, liver areas become scarred. It develops in uh, almost all patients with chronic liver injury at variable rates, depending on the cause of the liver disease and depending on other factors related to the patient. The development of fibrosis usually requires several months to years of ongoing injury. The fibrosis is usually reversible in its initial stages. However, if it continues to progress, it can lead to what we call cirrhosis. Fibrosis may be present and may be asymptomatic, meaning that patient may have scar tissue in the liver, but they don't show any symptoms related to that, especially in early stages of fibrosis. Even sometimes labs and imaging studies 
may be completely normal despite the presence of some type of scar tissue in the liver. However, if we do a liver biopsy, we can detect early stages of fibrosis or scar tissue. Now we'll discuss cirrhosis, which represents a late stage of progressive liver fibrosis. It's characterized by distortion of the liver architecture. It's generally considered to be irreversible in its advanced stages. And at some point, the only treatment option will be liver transplant. How do we diagnose uh, cirrhosis? Symptoms, patients uh, may present with different um, complaints or symptoms depending on the, uh, uh, where the patient is on the spectrum of the liver disease. So if the patients present with, or uh, if the patients have an early inflammation of the liver, they will present with right upper sided uh, abdominal pain. They may have fatigue, fever, jaundice, which is a yellow discoloration of the eyes or the skin, nausea and vomiting, itching, and decreased appetite. If the liver disease is more advanced and patients have significant scar tissue in their liver or what we call cirrhosis, then the symptoms may be different and more advanced and patients may now present with leg swelling, which we call edema, abdominal distension, confusion, forgetfulness and memory issues, weight loss, mainly uh, loss of muscle mass, and gastrointestinal bleeding where the patient may present with uh, vomiting blood or blood in the stool. Now, how do we make the diagnosis of chronic liver disease? Blood test, we usually um, draw blood to test for or to assess the liver function, which may be affected in uh, advanced stages of liver disease. Imaging studies, whether it's an ultrasound or a CAT scan or MRI, they can um, look at the liver and diagnose um, advanced liver disease and cirrhosis if the liver looks shrunk with irregular borders or nodular, that is typical for cirrhosis. It can also detect complications from cirrhosis by showing fluid in the abdomen or enlarged veins in the abdomen, which we call varices. Fiber scan is a special ultrasound that we, uh, we perform in the office at the bedside and it uh, assesses the stiffness or the elasticity of the liver, which measures the fibrosis, the amount of scar tissue. It can also quantify the fat in the liver if there is any. Liver biopsy, which is a, a more invasive uh, procedure, and it consists in uh, uh, getting a small tissue uh, sample from the liver, either with a needle or during a surgical procedure. And the sample is uh, analyzed under the microscope by a, a pathologist and we can assess the amount of inflammation, the amount of scar tissue, detect cirrhosis if there is any, and also it can um, find out the type of liver disease or the injury that has caused the liver disease. What are the complications of cirrhosis? The most common complications of cirrhosis are related to what we call portal hypertension. Portal hypertension means increased pressure in the vein of the liver. And that happens because now the liver has lots of scar tissue. It is not smooth anymore. It's not soft, it's uh, rough. And the blood does not, does not flow through it easily. So there is pressure that builds in the vein of the liver. We call it portal hypertension. That pressure can affect other veins in the body, 
including those in the food pipe and in the stomach, leading to what we call varices, which are enlarged veins. Those varices, if they continue to swell, they may bleed. Another complication of portal hypertension is retention of fluid or retention of water, either in the legs causing edema or leg swelling or in the abdomen causing what we call ascites. Confusion and, for, and forgetfulness are other complications of advanced liver disease and cirrhosis. And uh, these are related to the inability of the liver to filter the blood from the ammonia and other toxins that the body produces every day and that are toxic to the brain. Liver failure can also lead to a kidney failure. Easy bruising and severe bleeding are commonly seen in patients with advanced liver disease and cirrhosis, and they are related to the inability of the liver to produce proteins that are necessary for the blood to clot. They're also related to the low platelet count that most of the patients with cirrhosis have. Liver cancer is another complications of advanced liver disease and cirrhosis. So liver cancer, um, the most common liver cancer seen in patients with cirrhosis is called hepatocellular carcinoma. And it often occurs in the setting of chronic liver disease and cirrhosis. Patients with cirrhosis have about three to 4% uh, risk to develop cancer every year, uh, cancer of the liver every year. And uh, that's why all patients with, di with a diagnosis of cirrhosis should undergo screening for liver cancer with imaging and tumor marker every six months. Some other patients will need this screening despite not having cirrhosis, uh, mainly patients with chronic hepatitis B. Despite the absence of cirrhosis, these patients are also are at increased risk of developing cancer of the liver and should undergo the screening. Most of the times, the diagnosis is made based on imaging, uh, the way the liver cancer looks on the scan or on the MRI is very typical and very characteristic. And we rarely need uh, a liver biopsy or a biopsy of the mass to confirm the diagnosis. If the liver cancer is detected early and the function of the liver is preserved and there is no sign of portal hypertension, then surgical resection is curative. If the patient is not a candidate for surgical resection, then the other curative option is liver transplantation. Waiting for the transplant, we need to make sure that the cancer does not continue to grow, does not travel outside of the liver. So to, to prevent that from happening, there are therapies that are delivered directly to the liver or to the cancer precisely to prevent the growth of this tumor. We can either inject chemotherapy uh, to the artery that feeds the tumor or radiation to the tumor. Other therapies involve the use of the heat or the cold to destroy the liver cancer. Other options for treatment of liver cancer include external radiation therapy. More advanced liver cancer can be uh, treated with systemic chemotherapy or immunotherapy, which are most of the times considered as uh, palliative measures. Liver transplant may be the only option or uh, for treatment of advanced liver disease, cirrhosis with uh, complications related to portal hypertension and to uh, liver cancer. And this is a surgical procedure that removes the sick liver and replaces it with a full healthy liver from deceased donor 
or a portion of a healthy liver from a living donor. The patients are placed on the list for transplant after completing an extensive evaluation. The transplant evaluation is an assessment of uh, the operative risks, medical compliance, and comorbid conditions that could affect the survival of the patient and could affect the graft survival as well. So before we put the patient on the wait list for liver transplant, they go through a very thorough evaluation. They'll be seen and evaluated by um, a liver doctor, by a transplant surgeon, by a dietitian, by a social worker, by a cardiologist, infectious disease doctor, anesthesiologist, pharmacist, and depending on their medical condition and their other comorbidities, they may need to be seen by other specialties. Once the evaluation is complete, then a multidisciplinary selection committee reviews the evaluation to determine if the patient uh, can make it safely on the transplant list. So once approved by the committee, then the patients are listed on the wait list based on their blood type, the ABU blood type and the priority on the list is established by what we call the MELT score. So the MELT score or the model of end-stage liver disease score is calculated based on four blood tests. One is the creatinine, which reflects the kidney function, the bilirubin, which assess, um, which one way to assess the liver function, the INR, which reflects how thin is the blood, and it's another way to assess the liver function as well, and the sodium level. So the MELT score typically ranges between 6 and 40, 6 being normal and 40 being the highest. The higher is the MELT score, the higher is the patient on the list. So the sickest is the patient, the earliest they will get um, transplanted. Thank you.